Okay, this is a simple video talking about a bit weird topic um, for entertainment game 3D modelers, but uh, industrial designers and, and the like are, are very familiar with it. And anybody working with manufacturing surfaces and, and molds, and especially the folks at uh, uh, automotive design, where, where this stuff really matters. So it's about surface continuity and the way it's often defined is g0 g1 g2 g3 etc then it goes on and on g4 g5 um, and uh, i have example surfaces made in CAD, CAD software here they are not exactly um, similar shapes they could be close to each other's but that's not really the point the point is the way the uh, transitioning from one from one direction to another happens so the very very first one is G0, which means it's these sharp angles. It means that there is no uh, no surface continuity. So basically we go from one direction to another in one abrupt point and, and sharp point. It doesn't feel smooth to the finger uh, and it's pr pretty obvious the, the <coughs> direction changes there. Then I have two examples of G1. One of them is the same shape, but uh, a chamfer with a constant radius made both uh, to the upper and lower edge and then another one which is drawn with a spline um, but similarly it's a, a g1 spline so basically that's one point here one point here one point here one point here and what uh, defines g1 is that it is smooth to the finger if you're gonna slope your finger from here to the slope it's gonna there is not gonna be a hard edge at any point but there is going to be a abrupt point for the change of the radius. So you're going to come infinite radius for the flat, and then you're going to switch immediately at one point to a radius of whatever arbitrary scale this is, but let's say six millimeters. But, but you're going to go from uh, no curvature to quite high curvature in one point. It still is, there is no uh, hard edge at any point or anything like that. Um, and then the G2 is the next one where that change of the radius is also a gradual. So basically you come from zero radius, zero radius, and then you start slowly picking up the radius. So you're going to get uh, almost infinite, almost infinite, and then growing, 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 growing until you reach the, the smallest it is, which is the hardest part of the curvature, and then it's going to smoothing out. Um, and then the G3 is where the rate of change of radius is gradual so it's <clears throat> one step further so so basically the first one is that uh, that there is no uh, gra uh, gradual change anywhere the next one is there is a gradual change in the direction but not in the radius and the next one is that there is a gradual change in the radius and then the g3 is that there is a gradual change in the change of radius and then you can go on g4 g5 g6 etc and when you draw 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 uh, nerve splines or or other like those splines where the the points are not stuck to the curve but they are like those weighted points uh, basically g2 means that you have three points in a row you have the start point and two others uh in direct row to the starting surface and the same in the end and then how tight the kink is that depends on the spacing of the uh, of those points or, or the weight of them um, in, in the software where you can change the, the weight but basically they those three are always lined up with a with a starting and starting surface and that means that you get the g2 continuous um, a blend from that surface and then the g3 means that there's four points in a row and now this might seem like a sort of <laughs> academic uh, geekery about wh wh why would you, anybody care about these that they they look mostly the same uh obviously the now these examples are not exactly alike but uh but generally the the general appearance here is pretty similar um uh, when it starts matter is mattering is when you get reflections let's see if i get this uh i hope i don't have to do editing here uh it, i have a reflecting surface that i'm trying to get my camera behind and the active shade is not the fastest thing ever especially when I hit five buttons at once 
So here I have a, a active shading where it's actually doing ray tracing. This bit sluggish, but I'll, I'll uh, show what's the crucial difference when it comes to reflections, which is what this really like in practice make, makes a difference. Let me try to turn it so that we can see. First, the G0. So the reflection gets cut on G0. It's kind of understandable. You have two mirrors that are, not, are uh, angled to each other. So the image that they uh, reflect is in no way in relation to each other. So the reflection can be cut. Like here I have the reflective lines and they get cut. Now G1 is the next one. The reflection is continuous. The shape meets, those corners meet here, but there is an abrupt change in the reflection. So there is a clear start and end. And this is how like a simple constant radius um, fillets and or, or bevels um, look on, on a sort of engineered objects or if you have a round, uh, if it was a concave shape and you have had milled it with a round bit and you have the, the absolutely straight and then you have the constant radius shape. And this is what happens. You have the reflection hitting a point where, where it changes its nature. So these two are G1 examples and you have that clear point where the reflection changes its shape. Now G2, you you have depending on the on the sort of sharpness of the kink, but there is actually a curve there. There is no there is no one hard point where you go from one one type of reflection straight to the round, but it's there is a curve to it. Now it's dependent on the on the surface uh, uh, the rate how how good of an example it is here here it's like barely obvious because it's pretty tight the curve but there is no hard edge there is no absolute hard line where the nature of the reflection goes from straight to the curved ones and then the third one g3 even that is is basically more smooth the the change rate of change of course our direction might be a little bit different i'll try to rotate a little bit but it's a bit sluggish here and i don't know how the camera is set up It's always not the easiest to find the good example conditions, but but basically here here the that slope that change uh, not only is it gradual but it is it is one step smoother, and this is why in automotive design you always talk about like uh, blends being G three or G four continuous because they are big shiny surfaces that are really made to look appealing and and they are really like polished to the to the you know uh, final finesse and they are very re reflective so so any kind of blemishes and awkwardness will show up so without making this any longer than necessary that's the difference the way i can explain it <laughs>